welcome. My name's Heath from Firefox Bushcraft and today we're going to look at bow making basics and we're going to start with roughing out a piece of wood to shape it eventually into a bow, a self bow or a bow that's made from one piece of wood. We'll be looking at working with ash today, Fraxinus excelsior. And I'm going to start with uh, pieces that are split out from the round, from the tree. This one's seasoned a little bit. And I'm going to take it through a couple of stages uh, of roughing out till we get to something that's the approximate shape we need. And at some point later we'll begin a process called tillering or shaping the bow to bend round into the correct shape. Choose a piece of wood that's as not free as possible, straight as possible. This one's about six foot three, very straight, and have a look at the bark. If you see that the bark twists or spiral round uh, the piece of wood, that's often uh, the tree's reaction to be in a windy place, it spirals to produce strength. Unfortunately, that's often um, mirrored in the grain of the wood as well so twisty bark usually twisty wood what we're looking for is good straight wood to make sure the barks untwisted or unspiraled throughout this series of films we're going to look at broadly two approaches we're going to look at the primitive or purist approach uh, using really basic primitive tools uh, and then if you've got a bit of cash to splash we'll look at uh, slightly more uh, modern tools or approaches so the first job is to split down the stave of wood. So this has been done already, of course. Uh, don't be tempted to split this. We'll try and split this down the middle and get two. That's going to be a little bit greedy considering this, uh, the nature of this natural material. So this is going to be big enough for our bow and give us plenty of margin for error. I'm going to look at the end, find a halfway point where it's already to start to split or check. Um, find a bit that's in towards the centre if possible and that's going to be our start point. Stick a slither of wood in the central checkpoint there. So the tool we're going to use now is a chalk line, basically a line covered in chalk used for marking that goes over the slither of wood and we bring this along the length of the piece of wood. Be careful, try not to touch the wood too much with it. This goes all the way to the end. Have a look along, make sure it's nice and central. Pull it tight at this end. Then give it a ping, lift it up and ping and that should trace a line down the side. If you're more of a purist with your kit or you like to know uh, how you'd replace a chalk line out in the field well then my approach would be to get myself a piece of string and coat that in charcoal dust stick that over and use that in a similar way. And if that's not pure enough, then make your own cordage from natural material. Two ply cordage method. So make your length of string. And then coat that with a bit of charcoal, with two bits of charcoal, and just rub it in between until that gets coated. Now, how many bows do you have to make before you can call yourself a bowyer? I wonder. Well, I've made a few. Um, I don't call myself a bowyer, I call myself a bow maker. I love making bows. Uh, and I don't think uh, any of these techniques demonstrated here are particularly original. But um, I think the key point to stress is it's about the learning. It's not about the bow, it's about the bow making. Uh, and there's plenty of mistakes to be made. So uh, the quicker you get going making mistakes, uh, the quicker you will get to, uh, to a bow that you're going to enjoy shooting. To take the tree and then release a stave from it or a piece of wood suitable for making a bow. We have to split it out of course, this has already been done. 
uh, and we can use metal wedges for this. If you're using metal wedges, just make sure they've got a bright colour on them. You put them down on the forest floor, you're lucky if you find them again. So that's a metal wedge. Alternatively, use an old axe head. Usually folks have got uh, plenty of old axe heads without handles hanging around. Use one of those for splitting. Or if you want to get more primitive, uh, you can use an axe to split out a wooden wedge or a glut. Uh, whatever you do, make sure you've got more than one of these, just in case uh, your axe gets trapped. You might need a couple of wedges just to split it out and release it. Uh, there's a couple of lightweight wedges here. As I say, put those down on the forest floor without marking. you will be lucky if you find them again. And what we do, put that into the check and create the split by hammering into the end there. What I'd probably do is follow along the central line, knock that in a little bit, follow the line to encourage the split along the central line and do that all the way along to the opposite end uh, and then start from the opposite end working towards the centre so you've got a split line up through the centre along the central line. And once you've got that line established, then you can go about kind of splitting it out proper. As I say, we'll be uh, a bit too much to expect two perfect staves out of this, so we'll just uh, leave this for one stave with plenty of margin for error either side. I won't say too much about the design of the bow, except to point to a couple of good books uh, if you're in North America, Canada, the traditional Bowyer's Bible by a series of authors comes in three volumes, that's excellent, particularly on the flat bow, uh, the sort of North American flat bow style. The other book I would recommend, more for I'd say European designs and long bows, we've got the traditional archer's handbook by Hilary Greenland. Some excellent clear templates in here and that will give you the dimensions that you're looking for to get you started.